the relationship between big data and predictive analytics is really interesting in mental health. Um, so at the moment, uh, psychiatry is what I would describe as a syndromal um, uh, discipline. That is, we have very few true disease entities where we know uh, we don't have, um, uh, for example, a tuberculous bacilli that we know can infect someone and be caught through um, uh, aerosol spray uh, and someone will get tuberculosis with a certain set of signs and physical symptoms and will respond to direct treatment. What we have is we have clusters of symptoms that over many, many years people have recognised co-occurring um, uh, and that's led to the diagnostic frameworks that we have in uh, uh, mental health. Now for a long time people have been looking for the equivalent of the tuberculous bacillus, you know, they've been looking for that um, uh, genetic difference uh, that will be causative in relation to a serious mental illness like schizophrenia. Uh, unfortunately to date we haven't been hugely successful in terms of identifying those causations, although I have no doubt that the human genome is hugely important. Uh, what we're beginning to think increasingly is that the predictive um, uh, value is going to come from looking at multiple data sets together that give us multiple different points um, uh, uh, of uh, information on an individual case. So uh, we'll have a mapped human genome, but we'll also have a social care data set, a criminal justice data set, a clinical data set that describes all of the phenomenology, an educational data set, um, and we'll be able to look at the interaction between these data sets. Um, uh, and I think it's much more likely in the next five to 10 to 15 years that we're going to see real predictive value coming from those combinations of data than we are pursuing a single source, such as genomics or proteomics. Uh, we will continue to pursue that course because that data is really interesting, but we've got to look at the interaction.